15 years old, first time I tasted alcohol, that was what I strive for, is the parties. On the weekends, I was the guy to go to to know where the parties were. And it just be, I was hooked, man, that was it. I was hooked. So, uh, did alcohol all the way through high school. And from Thursday till Sunday, that was my goal. And uh, it was just a different world. You don't, you don't think about people's feelings, how you're hurting them. I didn't care about whether my, where my parents were when I was under the influence. I didn't care about girls that I might affect. I was out to get mine, and that was all there was to it. And I mean, it went so far as getting into the occult with a buddy of mine. And uh, that just led into getting into drugs. Yeah, I had a tough time divorcing friends, uh, no matter what they were involved in. My best friend, his name was uh, Dave, David Spragno. I came up here to Portland to visit a friend, or my sister actually, and anyway, he, he went to this party. Uh, and he got stabbed there. Well, I'm another good friend of mine by the same guy. I wasn't there. <laughs> and this was a guy that I did everything with. If you saw one of us, you saw both of us. He, he fell into the arms of this mutual friend of ours. She was sort of, I guess, there to the very end, he uh, had gotten his left lung was collapsed, and he was having a tough time breathing. Oh, it's crazy. It's the last, the last words he said were about me. He, I guess he told her, you know, where's, where's Devin when I need him? I really struggle with that. At the time, I didn't have to lose nobody. <laughs> so I struggle a lot with survivor's guilt. Right. That was part of the, I guess, turning point realizing I needed to get I need to get out of California I, I had to move I, if I was gonna survive but looking back you know there are no accidents just happened to be that my parents are moving up here and I knew I couldn't live there I couldn't stay there and, and survive um, let alone raise a, a daughter or have a family and came up with just the bare bones minimum. It doesn't matter. You're starting over. It doesn't matter if you got nothing. Um, and again, you know, at that time, I was still hadn't really thought about God in any direction. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't it wasn't wasn't me. You know. Um, moved up here. Um, took about three weeks to dry out from doing dope and drinking. And the wife finally said, look, we got enough money to last the end of the month. You need a job. So I went out and found a job in three days and worked every hour they'd give me, everything I could do just to build something. Started over. We just started over. Austin was born five weeks premature. Didn't know if I was gonna, my wife or him were gonna survive it, uh, but they did. Something clicked right then at the same time my mom was saying, hey, we got this Revelation seminar, Orchard Seventh-day Adventist Church. Ah, oh, man, all right, I'll go to it. I went to the first one. I was hooked. And I mean, I didn't miss a one. Took Austin with me, he was just brand new baby sometimes, you know, whatever we had to do to get there. I didn't miss a one, that's what, that's what got me hooked back in. And, uh, been there ever since, you know. And, uh, 
I look how I look, you know. So I took some hits at the door when I was greeting, but um, it's okay. It's okay, you know. Um, the cool thing is that out of all this, you know, it ain't the damage that I can do in my life. It's what, I guess what God can do with a broken life. I wish I could leave that life behind. Um, I still struggle. Overall, it's definitely made me think about things before I have the knee-jerk reaction to, you know, God doesn't always win on that one, but um, I think overall it's been such a huge blessing. I mean, to have my family, that's, that's huge to me. So it's changed my perspective completely on life, you know, to realize that people are who people are. They got, we all got a background, and we all got some pretty dirty stuff, you know. It isn't always as dirty as somebody else's or as bad. But we're living in a sinful world, so we're all gonna get hit to some degree. Um, so I think trying to realize that and see that people are coming in from that outside world, and if we could just be that light, if only for that moment, maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Um, my life's an open book to both of my kids. They know what I've done um, across the board. You know, they know that I've had drug deals that went sideways and I've had guns pointed, pointed to my head. And I've, I've had those weird nights where you're not sure you're going to survive the night. I'm so glad that I survived all that because look what I'd have missed out on. You know, I've got two beautiful kids that just continue to blow my mind um, in their willingness to accept me. And then there's my wife. I can't imagine my life without any of them. I'm not going anywhere. No way. <laughs>